So, uh, remember that question I asked earlier this week? Yeah, they were cheating. How's it going, everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Funny story, today's been wild. It's Wednesday when I'm filming this. Uh, I've actually just spent the last, like, three and a half hours filming and actually completely editing an episode that was gonna come out this evening instead, uh, but then unfortunately, right when I finished editing, I was literally about to hit export, uh, NASCAR announced these huge penalties on Kevin Harvick and the four car. Uh, so I had to scrap half of what I talked about in that episode, and now I'm making a new episode just to talk about this. So it's gonna be a short episode, I hope, but here goes. So yeah, the NASCAR world has been talking the last two weeks about Kevin Harvick, Rodney Childers, four, the four teams, Stuart House Racing's dominance these last two weeks. Harvick won Atlanta, leading most of the laps. He won at Las Vegas, leading like 215 out of 267 laps. He's been incredible. But, like I briefly addressed on my episode just a couple days ago, I just talked about it as kind of rumors. I didn't really think NASCAR was going to do anything about it, and neither did Rodney Childers, apparently. He went on a radio show earlier this week and, earlier this week and talked about the idea of, or the fact that their rear window was kind of caved in, and he talked about, oh, it was just a part failure, it wasn't a big deal, he acted like it didn't give him any advantage. He was downplaying the whole incident. Boy, he looks silly now. Because Wednesday evening here, at about, I don't know, 5 o'clock central time-ish, NASCAR announced L1, level 1, Penalties, which is basically the harshest penalties you can get against that four team. A $50,000 fine, as well as he has to vacate the win and all of the bonus points. He won two stages and got five points for winning the race, so all seven of those playoff points are gone. He had to lose all that, plus a 20-point regular season penalty. It was one of the biggest, you know, it was one of the biggest penalties you can get. Car chief suspended for two races. It's... Not, not, not going well. And this is all because of a rear window brace apparently failed and bent and collapsed or something. And that's what caused the, the, this divot that you can kind of see over by this, the, uh, the CH in Bush. You can kind of see it under there. That's where that little divot was. And I talked about this a little bit earlier this week, but I, I always hate it when people say NASCAR drivers and teams are cheating because for the most, usually they're not. And usually it's, it's you know, it, 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 it makes the sport look bad if you're just gonna sit here and anytime somebody does well, like when Truex was doing well last year, oh, he's cheating. When Jimmy Johnson was doing well in the past, oh, he's cheating. It's like, can a guy just not be good? I mean, you know? And that's kind of where I was feeling about this Kevin Harvick incident. I figured it was just a coincidence. I didn't think it had any issue. I didn't think there would be a penalty, honestly. I thought maybe they'd address it and say, hey, you can't have that happen anymore, but it, I'm, they cheated. The jury is out on whether it was intentional. You know, there's been, in the past, it was a case where the, the piece seemed to fail in the race, and they passed pre-race inspection, and actually passed post-race inspection. It was when they took the car back to the R&D center that they found the penalty and gave them the penalty. Uh, there's been instances in the past of teams kind of who, who build body parts on the car that are intended to break. They intend for parts of the cars to break. And so there's a good chance that that's exactly what this is right here, and that's why Rodney Childers and Gavin Harvick's team are getting in trouble. I'm just disappointed more than anything because, you know, I'm not a big Kevin Harvick fan and I don't really think him dominating right out the gate like this is really the best thing for NASCAR. NASCAR's been pushing all these younger drivers, the drivers with bigger personalities that are more widely known or that they're hoping to become more widely known. And Kevin Harvick's a guy who's on his way out. I mean, he's got a couple years left in his career likely and that's it. So NASCAR, I can't imagine they're super thrilled that Harvick's come out and dominated the first two of the first three races this season. And now that we found out that his dominance may not have even been legit, and that he might have been cheating, and this 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 whole issue might have added to it, that it leaves a bad taste in your mouth, as, as in my mouth at least, as an NASCAR fan. Because if Kevin Harvick's just going to come out here and annihilate the rest of the field, he better at least be doing it fairly. So anyway, I, like I said, there's no knowledge of whether or not it was intentional. Rodney Childers was clearly trying to downplay it earlier this week. I mean, there's, you know, teams are always trying something. And like like last year in the playoffs, Chase Elliott's team put that little piece of tape on his rear spoiler to add a tiny bit of downforce. That got caught. I felt like the penalty should have been worse because that was pretty blatant. But teams are always looking for little things that don't always go noticed to gain an advantage. And... I'm glad that they caught Harvick in this case in the four car and I just think it's, you know, hopefully this puts a stop to it. Now the question arises, would it have really mattered that much? Would he have still been probably the best car? Would he have still won the race? That's still, that's unclear. Is he still the favorite going into Phoenix? That's unclear. In the episode that I'm going to be uploading, I guess tomorrow now, the day after this one, I which I actually recorded before this, I talk all about how Harvick's probably the favorite for Phoenix and whatnot, and I, I might have to backtrack some of those statements now because now I don't know how dominant that four car is because I don't know how much of it's legit. But 
I think needless to say, he won Atlanta, and they didn't find anything wrong with his car at Atlanta, so he definitely was really fast there. That's what makes me think maybe this Las Vegas deal isn't that big of a deal. Maybe this penalty is more just the principle and not that the fact that the rear window beam thing actually failed really was an advantage. More it's just, you know, I, I, I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, long story short, if I can just, my big takeaway is, like I said, I'm just disappointed because... <sighs> You know, Kevin Harvick's not the guy NASCAR wants to see dominate the early parts of a season when a bunch of new eyes are tuning in to see what these young guys can do. They don't want to see older drivers that aren't super popular, like Kevin Harvick, winning these races like this. And I'm not saying NASCAR needs to like manufacture fake stuff and in t intentionally nerf Kevin Harvick or, or Clint Boyer or, or some of these, what's another veteran, Ryan Newman. If Ryan Newman was amazing or Martin Truex, I'm not saying NASCAR needs to go in and should go in and actually alter their cars so they can't win. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's the same way baseball, you know, if, let's be honest, if the, what's a good example? When the New York Yankees are really good for Major League Baseball, it's really good for Major League Baseball. Like this last year with Aaron Judge, and now they're going to have Giancarlo Stanton. For any of you baseball fans out there, you'll get this metaphor. You know, with, with if when the Yankees are really good for baseball, when the Lakers are really good for the NBA, when the Dallas Cowboys or New York Giants are really good for the NFL, those leagues flourish because they love it. Those are huge markets already, and if they're really good, it just adds even more to it. So that's why... You know, people, Kevin Harvick last year made those statements about how he thinks the fact that Dale Jr. never won a championship and was never that, that successful in the Cup Series, he acted like that hurt, he said that that hurt NASCAR, and that hurt NASCAR's popularity. And at the time, I kind of criticized him for the way he said it, but he's not entirely wrong. If Dale Jr. had been, you know, the most popular driver in the sport and had won like three championships, I think NASCAR would be bigger than it is now. I honestly think it would. Just like, you know, obviously if the Yankees or the Cowboys won every championship for those leagues, it would get old, much like Golden State winning all the NBA championships is getting old. But those teams, like this last year in, in Major League Baseball, we had the Yankees were good, you had the Cubs good again, you had the LA Dodgers good, you had the Houston Astros good. Those are four of the biggest cities in America, and all their teams were made it deep into the playoffs. And I think this last year was one of the best years for baseball. In fact, this World Series, I believe... I remember reading this last World Series, at least some of the games had the highest ratings of any World Series in the last decade. So my point is, when big names do really well in sports, when Tiger Woods dominates golf, when Roger Federer, Serena Williams dominates tennis, when Jimmy Johnson or Dale Earnhardt Jr. or Tony Stewart or Jeff Gordon dominates NASCAR, it's better for that sport as opposed to if a guy like Kevin Harvick or Matt Kenseth or Martin Truex, really. or If one of them dominates the sport, it's not that big a deal. It's not that good for the sport. So. I guess my issue is, you know, not that Kevin Harvick won. If Kevin Harvick's team is really the best and they're really, he's really good, he deserves to win. And, you know, that just is what it is, you know. The fact that he won this race and dominated the way he did, and now it turns out his car was not legal, it's not good, you know. I would rather have seen Kyle Larson or Chase Elliott win that race, you know. I think NASCAR as an organization would have rathered Kyle Larson or Chase Elliott or even Kyle Busch win that race, so... Leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I'm glad they caught him at least, or they at least uh, they apparently thought it was a big enough infraction to warrant a pretty hefty penalty. Like I said, fifty thousand dollar fine to the crew chief, two race suspension for the car chief, uh, twenty regular season point deduction, and all the bonus points he gets for winning the race are also been eliminated. So it's almost like that race didn't even happen for Kevin Harvick. So I'm glad they glad they found it. I just wish it hadn't happened because it makes it makes NASCAR look foolish. It makes the sport look foolish, but. Hopefully, the more of these we catch, like Chase Elliott's team last year, like Harvick's teams th this year, you know, the more you, you catch, hopefully the less that them break the rules. So, that was a really long rant speech. I hope my metaphor made sense. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. That's all I have for this, this episode. It, I was trying to keep it relatively quick, easy for me to edit, because I've already spent all day editing a different episode that will be up tomorrow. And tomorrow, I will talk about uh, a couple different things. I'll give you my picks for... Uh, <clears throat> uh, Phoenix or ISM Raceway. I'll talk about that tomorrow, and I'll also talk about a fun little game I'm doing tomorrow. I'll rank the top six drivers under the age of 26. I just recorded all that, so I've just filmed it. I think it came out really good, so I hope you look forward to that, and it's interesting to talk about, even though it's early in their careers. I like to see where everyone's at and stack them up right now, but anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys uh, stick around for tomorrow, and uh, hope, this, uh, hope you have a great week. See you soon.